Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a review of the Comacat CVM VM10 Mark II microphone. Okay, so just before we get into this review, just the complete transparency and honesty with this. I've been sent this microphone free of charge and I get to keep the microphone after the review. Now it's gotta be really important to note here is that everything that I say is all my words. I do not listen to anybody when I do stuff like this. So this is all my doing, nobody else's. Now if you're interested on my criteria for doing reviews and such and how I go about doing them and like like my, my rules and regulations as it were, there'll be a link up here and there'll be one in the description for a little video just me talking about why I go or how I go about doing these things. Okay, so with that said now, let me get on with the video. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is reviewing the Comacat CVM VM10 Mark II. It's highly likely I'll call it either the Comacat, the mic, the microphone, the VM10 or the VM10 II, whatever. I won't be using its full title, it's a bit of a mouthful and I'll probably only get it wrong as well. And so basically what I'm going to do is try the microphone in a number of different positions as it is right now, just on this little stand right in front of me, which would be kind of good for like podcasty stuff or vloggy stuff or basically anything where you don't mind the microphone being in the shot like this. I'm also going to shortly test it on a boom stand coming just out of the frame and then I'm going to go outdoors and do some stuff outdoors as well. Well, I've actually already done the outdoor stuff the other day and uh, there's some quite interesting results from that as far as I'm concerned. I'm really made up with uh, some of the stuff I got outdoors. So I've already heard that. I've not heard this stuff yet, but I'm sufficiently happy enough with the outdoor stuff to have a smile on my face at this point, right at the very start of the video. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to put the microphone in a different position just so we can see, you know, here, you know, how well it sounds when it's out of the frame and like a bit further away from me as well. So what I've done now, I've got the microphone just out of the frame up here. Let's see if I can get that in the shot there. So there's the mic just there. Now what it is, that is on a boom arm or a scissor stand, whatever way you want to refer to that's the same thing. It just keeps the microphone up in the air, but out of the frame. Now the reason why you might want to do this is because you simply just don't want to have the microphone in shot. Now whether that is for vlogging, podcasting, interviewing, doesn't matter as long as you don't want the mic in the shot just keep it out of the frame on something like this now what's also important to mention here is that i always recommend that you get the microphone as close as you can to the subject who's talking obviously in this instance that's me so on the first take when i had the microphone on the little stand in front of me it was nice and close and here it's a bit further away but you know, it's still close enough to be very effective at picking up my voice. So it's really important to get the microphone as close as you can, because it just gives the microphone the best opportunity to pick up the best sound that it can from the voice or the person that you're kind of filming. So whether that's yourself like I'm doing right now, or you might be pointing the microphone and the camera at somebody else and they're doing the talk and just get it in as close as you can. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do now, whilst the microphone is in this position, I will use this position to do a very quick unboxing, and then what I'll do after the unboxing, I'll get outdoors and do the outdoor stuff. So to start off the unboxing, what I'm gonna do is just turn the box around so you can see all the writing on the box. If you need to, just pause the video if you wanna kinda of like look at something a bit longer and read it properly. So that's the front of the box. And then this is one side of the box. And as we can see on here, it's just giving us some basic information. It's telling us that the microphone is a cardioid mic. Also, it's mini and light. It's got a shock mount and it's super anti-interference. And it's also for smartphones, GoPros and cameras. Now, the cardioid pattern of this microphone, I will get into that when we get outdoors and I'll explain what that's all about. And also this bit here as well about the cables that are attached to it to attach it to smartphones and such. I'll be getting into that once we're outdoors as well. And then there's the back of the box as well. Like I say, if you need to, if you want to read through all that, just pause the video. And then finally, that's just the other side of the box. And that's just giving us some ideas 
of like how the microphone can be set up and for what kind of uses. So what I'll do here, I'll just open it up and get into it. So once we're into the box, the first thing that we're gonna find is some paperwork, and that's ranging from a contact card, manual, and warranty card. So once we get the box out, the first thing that we're presented with here is a very impressive carry case. It's brilliant. This is the exact same one that's on the Mark 1 version of the VM10. And I've covered that in a previous video, and I was massively impressed with that. And this is exactly the same. It's basically like a, a semi-soft hard case, which offers a ton of protection for the microphone and everything else in the box. And it's also got a very substantial zipper on it. It's, it this really is something that you would pay extra for as a side issue for any microphone then once we're inside it's got high density die cut foam here as well which holds all these bits in place really well then it's got a bit of webbing here which gives us a compartment for the rest of the things now what i'm going to do i'll just pull this out to one side and then i'll go through all the bits individually that come in the box so the first thing out of the box is a TRS to TRS microphone cable. And this is what you would use for connecting to most camcorders and DSLRs. Now the next thing out of the box is a TRRS to TRS microphone cable. And this is for connecting to things such as smart devices, phones and whatnot. And I have to say right now, you don't normally get this type of cable just in with the packaging either for any of these types of microphones. The next thing in the box is the dead cat for the microphone. Now what's interesting about this one, it differs a bit from the one for the Mark 1 version of the VM10 because this one doesn't have such long hair on it, which is actually a good thing because this one won't be dipping into your frame and getting hair into the frame on your shots. And then this is the foam filter for the microphone. So in certain instances where it's not too windy and you don't need the dead cat, you can just use this simple foam filter, which is really good. And then the next thing out is the microphone's shock mount. And this can be used with camcorders or any other recording device that uses a hot or cold shoe. Because as well as holding the microphone in place in the top, it also has a connection as well, which locks down onto a cold shoe or a hot shoe. And finally, to the microphone itself. Now, before you ask yourself that weird question, but Dave, how can you be shown as the microphone if you're actually talking on it right now? Well, what it is, this is actually the Mark 1 version of the microphone. The reason why I'm using it during the unboxing is so that I can keep using the Mark 2 to talk with, but the Mark 1 is exactly the same physically as the Mark 1. So the Mark 1 Mark 2 are identical physically, so you'll get a good idea of exactly what the Mark 2 looks like by looking at this one. Okay, and the other thing is, like I was saying a bit earlier, it's a cardioid microphone. And I'll explain that shortly now when I get outdoors. So, to the outdoor part of the testing. So I'm outdoors now and I've got the VM10 Mark II mounted on top of my camcorder. And this is at full arm's length away. And this is what I would traditionally call a vlogging distance. So I'm well like kind of like within the distance that this microphone is gonna pick up well with. Although I will do a bit of a distance test shortly just so we can see what it picks up like at distance. Now the other thing here as well is I've got the foam filter and the dead cat on because there is a slight breeze although this weather is gorgeous it's amazing it's really sunny uh, there is a bit of a breeze with it as well so it's imperative that you use some form of filtering for wind on any microphone that you use when you go outdoors okay and like i always keep saying to people always get as close as you can to the microphone you know because the microphone is going to pick up best when you do that and your dialogue will sound better but for those instances where you can't quite get as close to the mic as you would like, I'm just going to walk off a little bit here. So, you know, this is going to give us an idea of how the microphone's going to start picking up from a distance. Again, you know, it's not something that I would recommend you do unless you have to do it. Always get as close to the subject or the sound source as you can. Okay, now this kind of distance here, I will have dropped off quite considerably. If I carry on going backwards, it'll just keep dropping off even more and more. So what I'll do, I will walk back in towards the camera 
and then I put my arm out at full length just so I know I'm roughly back in the same vlogging position again that I'm you know I, I usually do in these positions now also as I'd explained earlier on you know about this microphone being a cardio microphone and the fact that it picks up less from the sides and even less from the rear I will now do the cardio test here so what I'm gonna do is keep me arm fully out like that and I'm gonna spin round so I am now to one side of the microphone and the camera so I should have dropped off a bit there my dialogue should have gone lower and then I'll come round to the back and again I'm the same arm's length distance so what we should notice is a drop off in my dialogue level and also the tonal change and stuff like that and then I'm back round to the other side here so this side again should be similar to the other side in the fact that there's a bit of a drop off and then I'm back round to the front again at full arms vlogging distance away. Okay, now what I'm going to do is stand out of the frame and I will do a bit of a silence test. Now what I'm going to do here is just like, I'll be dead quiet and we'll, we're going to pick up sounds around us but this test is specifically to see if we're going to be picking up hiss off the microphone. Okay, so that was the silence test and that was specifically so we could see if we could hear any noise within the microphone itself. Now what I'm going to do, I think I've got something else in my bag of tricks here, so give me one second. So here is another test actually with the camcorder. What it is, in my bag I had my headphones and my headphones use a detachable cable. So I've now used the detachable cable to connect the microphone handheld to the camera. So as we can see there, hopefully, let me just see if the camera will get in focus there. Now the camera may not focus, I'm not entirely sure. But what I've done here, I've mounted the microphone to a pistol grip. So basically what this means is you can go out and do reporter style filming and audio capture with this microphone, which I think is another pretty cool thing you can do with it. Anyway, so this was just an off the cuff test because I just realized I had my headphones with a detachable cable in the bag. And whilst I'm at it, I've just come up with another off the cuff idea whilst I'm outdoors. Now, if this idea doesn't work, I'll go straight back indoors, but let's see if this next idea works. Okay, so for my off the cuff test number two, I'm actually now using the VM10 Mark II with a smartphone. So as we can see from this camera over here, I've got it mounted to the top of a little grip system on a pistol grip. So let me just see if I can get this into focus. Now it, it may not focus again, I'm not entirely sure. What it is, I can't actually see the screen on the camcorder. I'm a bit too far away to check focus here. But that, that should give us an idea of the setup there. But more importantly, what this test is for is for us to gauge what the sound of the mic's like with a smartphone. But also on top of that, this is an example of the second cable that comes with the, you know, with the microphone, which is the TRRS to TRS cable. Let me just move around a little bit here as I'm doing this. So I'll just walk a bit with the smartphone. I mean, this isn't actually a picture test for the smartphone or anything. This literally is an audio test for the microphone. And plus on top of that as well, I'm not entirely sure, but the smartphone may not be recording at the same frame rate as what my other camera is. If that is the case, this picture may look a bit odd, but you know, no, that's not really the issue here anyway because what we're trying to gauge is the audio quality of the VM10 Mark II with a smartphone in this instance a Pixel Mark 1 okay so that is definitely the end of my off the cuff test so now back indoors so I can like do a summary on my experiences with the VM10 Mark II Okay, so to the summary then, and also for the summary, I'm gonna be positioning the microphone in a different position indoors again. So this time it's on top of the camera. So just there on top of the camera. So again, it'll give just give us another idea of another position indoors. Now what's also worth noting here as well is that I've got a computer on right now and it's very windy and like noisy outdoors as well because it's like tea time now. So there's a lot of traffic as well on the road. Um, and yeah, I think that'll give you a really good idea actually about doing this kind of vloggy thing in a 
typical living room because I am in a living room after all. So this will give us a really good idea of like, you know, you probably your worst case scenario to be honest with a microphone like this. And that's being in a room that's like very kind of like lively and echoey. I've got a computer on and there's noises coming in through the windows. Okay, so what I'm gonna try and do is keep this as short as it can. Now at this point, I would normally kind of go on about like the, 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 the bad points and the good points of a microphone or anything that I'm reviewing. But I've got to say, you know, bearing in mind that this microphone, the entire set cost anywhere between 40 to 50 pounds, 40 to 50 dollars. There really isn't any bad things to say about this because you have to take that price on board and kind of like understand what it is you're getting for that. Those two cables, especially the TRRS cable, and let me just stress that point as well, them TRRS to TRS cables, you normally have to pay for them separately. They don't normally come packaged with like, you know, little microphones like this. Also, the package or the box itself, I mean, there's the box there, honestly, that there is amazing. Again, you would normally pay separate for something like that. So. As for like bad points, I can't really say that there are any, and that's just me being dead genuine about that. Because the thing is, you, you do have to bear in mind how much you're paying for these things. So if this was tonally a bad microphone and it sounded bad, then yeah, you know, I'd have bad things to say about it, but I don't. Because, you know, all things considered, the package, what you get, and the, the microphone does sound good for what it is. I'd just say that there's no bad points at all. Now, all the way through this test, you know, I've put the microphone in a number of positions and I've also used it on a phone as well. So that should give people a really good idea as to how this microphone kind of sounds and what you can get away with doing with it. So I would say it's quite a versatile microphone, to be honest. And, you know, the, one of the main reasons actually why I did the review of this is because I already had the Mark I version and I was suitably impressed with the Mark I anyway, so there was going to be no great surprises for me with the Mark II. I always knew I was going to like it anyway. Now, just a couple of technical things. Every time I did a take for this video, what I do, I get the level optimized when I go into the camera. And then when I go to the edit, all I do is balance each take. And the reason why I do that is because you need to hear exactly how this microphone sounds really um so i don't add like any treble or bass or compression when i do this i do stuff like that when i'm doing vloggy things but when it's a proper test of a microphone in this instance you can't be adding things like treble and bass or compression because it alters the tone of the microphone and then you, you don't hear exactly what it's like. You know, people like to add noise gates or noise reduction and stuff like that. You can do all that anyway with any microphone. But like I say, for this test, what you've heard is the microphone exactly as it was recorded going into the camera. Another thing as well, um, after looking at uh, various things to do with the microphone, it's you know some of the like the stuff it comes with, the packaging and stuff, and then also thinking it's manual and something that I'd read online. One thing says it's a cardioid. Another thing says it's a super cardioid. I'm gonna hazard a guess here, and judging by what what we hear the outdoors, that this is a super cardioid. Now, I would say that that's a brilliant thing because I personally think that super cardioids are a better option for doing vloggy type stuff or, or basically any dialogue type recording. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm putting my money on that it's a super cardioid. And if it isn't, I'd be very surprised because I think it's cardioid pickup pattern does match a super. And I do think it does sound great. In fact, what was quite surprising when I did the little walk off piece as well, when I was outdoors, it seemed to be picking up very well as I was getting further away. I was, I was quite surprised at how well it picked up. Um, yeah, so I think I could carry on doing this all day, going through, dissecting things. But I think, you know, with all the takes that I've done here, you can make your own mind up over whether or not, you know, the mic, you know, you think it's a good mic or not. Me personally, I think it's a fantastic mic for its price. And especially bearing in mind what you get with it, because straight out of the box, as it were, 
you've basically got all the cable and all the bits you would need to use this microphone in a number of scenarios. Okay, so I'll stop rabbiting now and I'll give it a miss now and then, you know, we'll call it a day with this particular review and test because I do go on and on if I don't reel myself in. So the last thing that I would like to say is I've been David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.